Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome to F7 financial reporting webinar for June 2018 attempt. I'm your tweeter Hamza Abdul Haq and I will be taking you throughout the course. A brief uh, tutor's profile. I'm an ACCA member experienced from Deloitte Pakistan and I've been teaching ACCA since last nine years and I've been teaching ACCA papers F7, F9 and P2 and I've been able to produce multiple nationwide position in different attempts. Historic, uh, historically, I've been producing pass rates above the above the global pass rates throughout my teaching career and I've conducted multiple training sessions of IFRS that have been officially conducted by ACC and ICAP. ICAP is the local body of Pakistan. Let's discuss uh, the paper pattern. We are starting with an overview. Uh, in the exam, you're going to find three different sections, section A, section B and section C. Section A will be having 15 OT questions of two marks each that will make a total of 30 marks in section B you are going to have three OT case studies with five OTs in each case study making total 15 questions OTs of two marks each making again a total of 30 marks so 15 questions in section A and 15 questions in section B and you will be having two different questions in section C which will be constructed response questions of 20 marks each this will make a total of 40 marks normally in ACCA paper F7 these two constructed response questions normally comes from ratio analysis one question is going to be from ratios and second question is normally either from final accounts or from consolidation so these are two different areas which are normally examined in the constructed response questions apart from this the question may include a, a small area of statement of cash flows in either uh, the question of ratios or along with the final accounts similarly the ratios also includes the ratio analysis on the consolidated financial statements so the consolidation question can also be mixed with ratio questions such as a case of disposal of subsidiary so this is how uh, you, you, uh, you're going to see the exam a total of 32 questions if we divide is this the section a is of total 30 marks section b is of total 30 marks which makes a total of 60 marks and section c is of 40 marks so normally my approach to teach is that if a student has a strong grip on section c because the number of areas here are comparatively limited as compared to section a and b so the areas which can be asked in section C are comparatively limited. So the students can focus on this more and try to score 30 marks out of this 40. If a student is able to score 30 marks out of the 40 marks, he needs only five OT questions from section A and five OT questions from section B to be able to pass the exam. So we need total 50 marks to pass. We are going to score 30 from section C. 10 from section A and 10 from section B. So out of 15 OTs, you need to, to mark only five of them correct. And similarly in section B also out of five, 15 OTs, you need to mark only five of them as correct. So five OTs from section A, five OTs from section B and 30 marks from section C. 30 marks basically means 15 marks in each of the question. So normally what happens is that if, if the question is of 20 marks each, there are going to be five marks which you which you would not be able to, to apply them correctly in the exam because of the exam pressure, because of the level of difficulty of that adjustment. So, uh, so in normal circumstances, I should expect a student to at least make five marks incorrect in every question. So that is the area which, which, which we don't want. We want only 15 marks out of the 20 marks area to, to be able to pass the exam. Now, you, uh, you would be aware of the seeded question that will be there in the exam as well. Now, what is a seeded question? That 10 marks of seeded questions will be included either in the form of five OTs in section A, which means section A will become of 20 OTs, section B of 15 OTs, but out of these 20, only 15 will be marked and five will not be marked, which will be called seeded question. The questions are there, but they are not going to be marked. And 
or there will be one OT case study in section B which will make 15 questions in section A and 20 questions in section B. So either you are going to have 20 questions, 20 OTs in section A or 20 OTs in section B. But five OTs will not be marked and these will be called the seeded questions. If you people have any question, you can post it um, on the computer screen. I will be able to answer your questions as well. So you will be having an option to chat and uh, to write down the questions. You can post your question uh, anywhere. I will be able to see that. Now the time available to you is going to be 2 hours and 20 minutes. The time available is going to be 2 hours and 20 minutes. Now how you are going to divide your, your 2 hours 20 minutes, how you are going to plan your exam. So for this we say that normally, normally if I say 2 hours and 20 minutes means 140 minutes. 2 hours and 20 minutes means 140 minutes for how many marks? For 110 marks. So 60 minutes in 1 hour, 60 minutes in 1 hour, 2 hours means 120 minutes and 20 minutes means 140 minutes. So if I use a calculator, you have 140 minutes for 110 marks. So on an average you have 1.8 28 minutes per mark you have 1.28 minutes per mark but for example if one OT is of two marks so you have 1.28 into 2 which makes you 2.56 minutes what if we save 0 0.56 minutes from this and 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 we try to solve one OT in two minutes the 0.56 into how many quad, uh, uh, OTs will be there 35 OTs will be there. So 0.56 into sorry. So 0 0.56 into uh, 15 OTs and 20 OTs makes it make, makes it 35. So you are going to save approximately 20 minutes from the OT questions. Now these 20 minutes will be used in constructed response questions. The CR questions. In CR questions, you, you have 20 uh, marks into 2 point into 1.28. Sorry. So that will become 25 minutes you, you will be having for a CR question. Plus, you have saved 10 minutes in the MCQs. So you will be having a total of 35.6 minutes. Have I done anything wrong? 20 into 1.28. 140 divided by 110 okay yes so approximately you will be having 35 minutes for each OT uh, for each constructed response questions in the exam even then if you feel that the number of time uh, you are having is comparatively less then you will be have uh, 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 you will be required to save more time in the OT questions Usman Parvez is asking that will the seeded question marks would be swapped for the wrong answers. No Usman, if you uh, uh, if there were five seeded questions and you have marked five of them correct, you are not going to get any mark, you are going to get zero. And if you have marked all five uh, uh, seeded questions incorrect, you are still going to have zero. Because the seeded questions will not be marked, neither in the total nor in the mark scored. So you will not be aware of which questions are actually seeded questions. Tajwar is saying example of seeded questions. Tajwar, uh, the, uh, the seeded question will be the same as of the normal questions. So in the exam, you won't be able to identify which are the seeded questions. Okay, Lavender is saying that what's the importance of seeded question? That is a good question, Lavender. Actually, seeded question will, will, will balance of the exam. For example, if you are finding the, the exam too difficult, if, if in the exam you find it too difficult, this means that there are some difficult questions which are seeded. And they won't be marked. So the paper will always be a balanced. If you're finding the paper too difficult, which this means that five of the difficult questions may be seeded question. And if you're finding a paper too easy, this means that five of the seeded questions are going to be from the easy, from the easy questions. So, so the paper will will be overall balanced. It will neither be easy nor be nor be difficult. So that so the seeded question is basically 
trying to create um, uh, I would say a pressure on the student and um, so if for example you are you are finding the paper too difficult this would mean that it is not actually difficult it is the seeded questions which are difficult but you won't but you won't still be able to know the uh, the time okay yes shadows i think there is a mistake can you people hear me properly everyone can you people hear me okay yes everyone is able to hear me that's good okay yes there is one mistake in uh, actually over here the the time available is 3 hours and 20 minutes so this is not actually 140 minutes this will become uh, 180 plus 20 that will be 200 minutes so let me recalculate this <clears throat> Three hours into 60 minutes plus 20 minutes will be 200 divided by 110 marks will be 1.8 minutes per mark so this is actually 1.8 minutes per mark into 2 is equals to 3.6 minutes that will be available so you have to save actually 0.6 minutes from this and you have to invest three minutes in one OT question and the 0.6 minutes saved into 35 will actually give you 0 0.6 into 35 will actually give you 21 extra minutes so again 10 uh, for, for for one CR question and 10 for the other CR question and the normal time available will be 1.8 into 20 so 36 plus 10 will give you 46 minutes so in OT questions we are going to apply three minutes per MCQ and for the for the CR questions, we are going to apply 45 minutes approximately per question. So this is the division of the time that we are going to apply in the exam. Three minutes per MCQ and 45 minutes per the, per the CR question. Okay. <clears throat> now let's move further. Let's have a quick overview of the paper linkages that the paper F7 is basically an advanced paper F of F3 and the knowledge will be carried forward to the paper P2. Some of the knowledge, some of the knowledge will also be transferred to F8. The dotted line means some of the knowledge. The complete line means uh, a majority of the knowledge. Similarly, some of the knowledge comes from paper F4 and some of the knowledge goes to paper P3, which will become SBL after June 2018 so these are different paper linkages of paper F7 so if, if your F7 is strong it will help you in P2 it, it will help you in F8 it will help you a bit in P3 or SBL and similarly if your F3 was weak you are going to have a tough time in paper F7 so all these linkages are important uh, uh, to understand that what importance your paper is actually having now let's have an overview of the capabilities which are required in paper F7. There are four different sections, section A, part A, part B, part C, and part D. Now I have actually divided these into different priority levels. The dark green means top priority, which means part B and part D. The light uh, brown type means normal and light green means low priority. So let's start with the dark green ones, the, uh, the, the, the top priority. This will include the accounting for transactions in the financial statements, which means all of the accounting standards and IESs or the IFRS. And the second is preparation of the financial statements, which means the, the preparation of the entity specific financials as well as uh, the consolidated financials. Both will be included in part D and part C is the analysis and interpretation of the financial statements, which means actually ratio analysis. And part A is the framework, which includes conceptual and the regulatory framework. So this is an overview of the capabilities that are required to pass your paper F7. Now, if we further go into the details of these capabilities, part A has two areas, conceptual framework and the regulatory framework. Even out of these, regulatory framework is comparatively less important and conceptual framework is comparatively more important. So if you have less time, which areas to focus? These areas to focus. 
but this does not mean that you can leave this areas you should be able to to apply every area but if you have short time go for these in part b we have tangible non current assets which includes is 16 is 23 and is 40 we have financial instruments which includes is 32 and ifrs 9 this includes leasing ifrs 16 taxation is 12 revenue ifrs 15 impairment of assets is 36 foreign currency transactions which is is 20 one apart from this we have inventory is2 we have biological assets is41 we have provisions is37 we have events of the uh, uh, after the reporting period is10 we have government grants is20 we have intangible assets is38 these are comparatively less important areas and 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 these are comparatively more important areas and then we have ratio analysis ratios calculation and, and interpretation in a 20 marks question you are going to find approximately eight marks relating to the calculation of the ratios in a 20 marks question you are going to find eight marks approximately from the calculation of the ratios so even if you if your calculation of the ratios is strong you are approximately halfway through the question if you score eight marks from the calculation these are easy marks obviously you are almost there you you just need seven more marks according to our target we had planned 15 marks in section c so these seven marks you need from the from the ratio analysis from the limitation of the financial statements and the other areas which are also a part of the analysis uh, uh, of the analysis and interpreting the financial statements and then we have preparation of the financial statements which includes entity specific including the cash flows and the consolidated financial statements so this was an overview of your your syllabus which areas actually you need to learn Okay, Kalsum Fatma is saying that she cannot see the working. She can only see the camera. Okay, Kalsum, I think there's some issue from your side. And okay, now let's move further. And now we are going to start the QBR session, question-based review, where we are where we are going to uh, solve different questions. The plan of uh, the day wise plan was already shared with you. Let me give you an overview again. In day one, we are going to solve two different questions of final accounts, the entity specific financial statements. In day two, we are going to solve two questions relating to the consolidation. In day three, we are going to solve two questions relating to the ratios, which means that your section C of 40 marks is going to be covered from over here. And you need to score 30 from this. My target is to make you able to score at least 30 marks from section C. And then in day four, we are going to solve section A type MCQs. And in day five, we are going to solve section B type MCQs. So this way is we are going to cover the majority of the paper in, in, in this short QBR session of 10 hours in five days. If you people have any suggestion, it, uh, I will be happy if you share with me that. Now let's start the QBR session for for papers F5 to F9 because the paper pattern is CBE. So I would I would want to solve the paper in the real exam environment. So I'm using Chrome. I have used Control Shift N to move into the in, uh, incognito mode, and I'm going to access a website by the name of gocbglobal.com. This is one of the websites that provides the real exam environment. Okay, Wilson is saying that will you share the presentation? Okay, Wilson, I will be sharing the presentation. In fact, I will be creating a WhatsApp group for the QBR session so that all of you can join me uh, in the WhatsApp group apart from the uh, QBR time. I will be there with you on the WhatsApp. You can have your discussions with each other. You can have your discussions with me. So I will create a WhatsApp group uh, today and we'll, sh we'll share the details in tomorrow's session that you can join. So now this is the website of GoCB Global. It is taking time to load and I'm, I'm going to click on the register button. I'm showing you how you're going to create an account of your own and how you're going to access the QBR questions and the other material that is being provided by GoCB Global.
So now they, this is a, uh, uh, this is a registration page, and I am using my email address hamzabdullah at the rate gmail dot com, and my first name, my last name, my country, my city. No need to write the address, and my contact number. You can also save the contact number if you want to contact me on WhatsApp. It's plus nine two double three four three seven three nine six nine seven. So you people can save the contact number and contact me on WhatsApp. So I filled the form and I've clicked on the register button, and I have been registered. And these are the papers that are available on the GoCB Global. I have added a paper by the name of F7 Financial Reporting Webinar, June 2018. In this, I'm going to upload all of the material that we will be solving, so that you people can also solve these questions at your home in the real exam environment. I would not suggest you people to use the Microsoft Excel. Instead, you should be using the real exam environment from the ACC platform or from GoCB or, or, or from someone else, which is providing the environment close to the real exam environment. Okay. So now. In day one, we are going to solve two questions: one by the name of Candy and one by the name of Moby. So, for example, if I click on Candy question, a new window will open with some introduction, with some instructions. If you read the instructions beforehand, before going into the exam, it will be helpful for you. And now, a final message: that Are you sure you want to start the exam? Yes, I'm sure. Here's an option of previous exam sessions. What is this basically? For example, if if you were attempting a test and due to some reasons the internet gets disconnected, or or there's some electricity problem, or 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 there's some uh, uh, any other problem, your test will be saved in this list. So your 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 work will not be actually lost. So let me start the exam now. Santesh is. Asking that what is the website? It's triple w dot go cb global dot com. I am sending this to all. <clears throat> okay, Rachel Sati is asking that what have we selected? I've selected this question first, Candy. If you people can also register along with me, and uh, you can also see the screen alongside, that will help you more. So that if there's some working which I'm doing, and you want to to try this in the real exam environment and immediate basis, so you can try alongside. So go on to gocbglobal.com, click on the button register, uh, fill the form, and then in the courses, I've selected the course as F7 Financial Reporting Webinar, June 2018. This is the course right now. Uh, no, this is not the specimen paper. This is uh, the material that that we will be solving in the webinar. So I am solving the question of Candy first, and then we'll be solving the second question of Moby. So let's start the question. Are you people ready? Should we start now, or you are creating the account right now? Uh, actually, Rachel, I think you have gone on to some other exam. Don't go on to F7 June 2018. Go on to F7 Financial Reporting Webinar. Webinar June 2018. This is the right option. Okay, Wilson is ready. Let me also have some water.
Okay, so now we are starting the exam. Now I'm going to start the question from the requirement. Requirement is prepare a schedule of adjustments. Prepare a schedule of adjustments. In the exam, you're going to have an option to highlight the important areas. So I'm highlighting this that my work is to schedule the adjustments required to the retained earnings. Adjustments required to the retained earnings of candy company as at 30th September 20x5 as a result of the information in notes one to three above. So we need to prepare uh, a schedule of adjustments we are where we are going to recalculate or adjust the retained earnings. In part B, the question says that prepare a statement of financial position, which means a balance sheet of candy company as at 30th September 20x5. This is my year end. And in the note question says that the notes to the statement of financial position are not required. So we're not going to prepare any notes. We will be we will be preparing the, the schedule of adjustments and we'll be preparing the uh, we will be preparing the balance sheet. Rachel is saying this this for the rest of the exam also. Yes, Rachel, actually I've I've gone uh, I have not got your question properly. In part C question says that prepare the extracts for candy company company statement of cash flows for operating and investing activities. So we need to prepare a cash flow statement as well for the operating and the investing activities for the year ended 30th September 20x5 which relates to property plant and equipment. So we are not required to prepare the entire operating and investing activities. We just need to prepare the operating and investing activities relating to property plant equipment, not the entire. So you're not going to start from PBT and everything else. Sefullah Islam is saying will the section ABC have separate time limits? No, Sefullah, the, the exam will be timed entirely three hours, 20 minutes, and you can spend as much time as you want for each section. <clears throat> okay, Rachel is saying for other CB exams like F5, F9. Yes, yes, Rachel, you can use the this this website for all of your papers from F5 to F9. And there's one more question. Are we going to solve the questions or we will be explaining the standard? Actually, we will be uh, solving the question uh, and we will be uh, uh, understanding the IES a bit of it. So if you people have any question relating to that, that standard, do ask that question. So I'm starting the question after preparing a draft statement of profit or loss for the year ended 30th September 20x5 and adding the current year's draft profit before any adjustment required by note 1 to 3 below to retain earnings the summarized trial balance of candy as at 30th September 20x5 is. So the question actually says that that they have prepared a statement of profit or loss and and then they have added the current year's draft profit added where added to the retain earnings okay so now what we need to do is that we will be reproducing or we will be preparing an adjust we will be preparing an a schedule of adjustments so i'm writing part a schedule of adjustments where we are we will be starting from the retained earnings as per the trial balance so i've written the values over here and if i double click on this it will automatically adjust the column width and I can even click and drag it accordingly. So the question has given us equity shares of 20,000 retain earnings closing of 15,500. This is from where we need to start. And proceeds of 6% loan notes being 30,000 investment properties at fair value. Investment properties means IES 40. And the investment property has actually two models, the cost model and the fair value model. So this investment property is being measured at fair value means at the fair value model. And then we have a land of 5 million and building 
at cost the total is 35000 which means 5 million 5000 relates to the land and remaining 30000 relates to the building we have plant and equipment at cost we have accumulated depreciation if you see the date of the depreciation is 1st october 20x4 which is the start of the year this means that the asset has not been depreciated for the current year this means that the asset has not been depreciated for the current year and the accumulated depreciation for proper for plant and equipment is 34500 current assets are 68700 current liabilities are 43400 deferred tax is 2500 the deferred tax value given to you in the trial balance will normally be the brought down balance we will be calculating the carried down and then we will be preparing a movement a double entry and then we have some interest paid of 1800 that would probably relate to this proceeds of 6% loan notes the loan was of of uh, 30000 the interest rate is 6% so 30000 into 6% will give us 1800 and this is the value provided to us in the trial balance and then we have a current tax of 1100 any current tax given to you in the trial balance is actually an under over provision relating to the previous year and then we have a suspense account of 17,000. The debit side is 184 and the credit side is 184. So we have gone through the, we have gone through the entire, um, I would say trial balance. Okay, now we are reading the adjustments. The question says that the loan note was issued on 1st October 20X4 and incurred issue cost of one million dollars and incurred issue cost of one million dollars which means that the, uh, the the issue cost the transaction cost needs to be deducted from the uh, from the loan notes which were charged to profit or loss the what 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 the question has done the question has mistakenly charged the issue cost to PNL interest of 1.8 million was paid on 30th september 20x5 which is also given in the trial balance the loan is redeemable on 30th september 20x9 which means that our year end was 20x5 and the loan will be repaid on 20x9 which means that this is a non-current liability at a substantial premium which gives the effective interest rate of nine percent per annum so the effective rate is 9% per annum. No other repayment are due until 30th September 20x9. No further amount needs to be paid. Are you people aware of the accounting of the issue cost or you, or, or, or you want me to explain you once? Are you people aware of the accounting of the for the transaction cost issue cost or you need, you, you need me to explain it once? Okay, everyone is saying explain, 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 explain once. Okay, okay, let me explain. Let me open a one note. Or even I can use the PowerPoint to do this. Okay, so now let's create a new page in this. Okay, now let's understand this that the loan notes are basically a financial liability to us we have taken loan from someone and we need to repay that loan now for example I have taken a loan the entry should be bank debit and the loan notes being the financial liability credit let's suppose I've taken a loan of hundred million dollars so the entry should be bank debit loan notes credit 
and I've taken the loan for four years. I've taken the loan for four years. Now I have incurred a transaction cost, an issue cost of let's suppose two million dollars. Now logically, this transaction cost. What should be the treatment of the transaction cost? Should it be expensed? Or what? What do you think the, the treatment should be of the transaction cost? If I've paid two million dollars for the transaction cost for the issuance of the loan notes, what should be the treatment? Usman says deducted from the amount received. What about others? Expensed. Kulsum says expensive short term in PNL. Toyeb says should be deferred, excluded, expensed. Actually, the transaction cost. Uh, majority of your people are right that the transaction cost is expense. I agree, but this is not an expense for any specific year. This expense, in return of this expense, we are going to receive loan for four years. So the expense two million will provide us benefit for the next four years. And according to the matching concept, according to the matching concept. The expense should be recorded over the period when we get the return. So this 2 million is an expense, but for how many years? For four years. So we should not be expensing $2 million on an immediate basis. Instead, we should amortize, we should distribute, we should spread the cost of $2 million over a period of four years. So the $2 million transaction cost is an expense, but it is an expense for the remaining four years so for the time being what do we do is that we debit the loan we debit the loan notes by two million dollars and bank credit by two million dollars why loan notes debit because i have paid two million but it's but it is not an expense for me i have paid two million dollars but it is not an expense for me so this means this is a type of prepaid expense for me this is a type of prepaid expense for me but this shall not be created as a separate asset. Instead, we actually net it off from the financial liability. And that is why it actually reduces the financial liability in the balance sheet. Now, my loan brought down will actually become 98 hundred minus two. And then the interest expense will be calculated using the effective rate. What is the difference between a coupon rate and effective rate? What is the difference between coupon rate and effective rate? Coupon rate is the rate on which we pay the interest. Coupon rate is the rate on which we pay the interest and effective rate is the rate which includes the interest as well as the transaction cost that we have paid. So the effective rate ensures that apart from the interest, the transaction cost is also recorded in the interest expense amount. So the effective rate incorporates the interest paid. It incorporates any discount that we have paid. It, it, it incorporates any premium that we are going to pay. It incorporates any transaction cost that we have incurred. So effective rate is the rate that actually incorporates four elements. Which four? The interest that we are paying, the discount we are giving, if any, the, the premium we are paying, we will be paying at redemption, if any, the transaction cost that we have paid, if any. So the effective rate actually incorporates all these amounts in the profit and loss. So this is why we say that the transaction cost shall not be expensed out immediately. So now let's move back to the question. And what you have to do is, for example, if I see we have. We are writing the answer over here. What we will do. I am stretching the question side. Onto the left. Now what I will do actually I will take these four columns or maybe six columns and then I will be shrinking this one column and I will say that I'm going to write my double entries over here and I will be using again four columns for the double entries and then I'm going to shrink one more column. And now I will be performing my workings over here. I'm using control B button to make the text bold. Now 
I am preparing a table where I am writing year, brought down, interest expense, interest paid, amortization, and then I'm writing the carried down. Now this is a table that we normally prepare and we call this an amortization table where I'm going to say that in year one the loan was actually 30,000 minus the issue cost of 1 million dollars. So the brought down should be 29,000 and the question has mistakenly expensed out the question has mistakenly expensed out the transaction cost. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to debit the loan notes and I'm going to credit the PNL. Where have the question recorded in the profit or loss? And a bit of over here to make sure that the entry looks good. So the loan note should be debited by 1000 and the profit and loss should be credited by 1000 1000 so effectively what will happen that the brought down is not going to be 30000 instead it is going to be 30000 minus 1000 so the brought down is 29000 and the effective rate was given by the question as 9% over here so equal to the brought down into 9% will actually give me the interest expense and the interest paid amount was given us uh, uh, given to us in the trial balance of 1800 also mentioned by the question that interest of 1800 was paid so this means that the amortization is 2610 minus 1800 that 810 is the amortization the issue cost expensed out the premium expensed out the discount expensed out and the carried down should be 29000 plus 810 so this is the value that should be taken to the balance sheet now i'm writing an accounting entry as finance cost debit bank credit and the loan notes credit by what amount finance cost debit by 2610 bank credit by 1800 and financial liability credit by 810 so this will actually increase my financial liability to 229810 30000 minus 1000 plus 810 will bring my liability on to 29810 so this was was expected from the students in the adjustment number 1 Kulsum is asking that uh, are we required to show the accounting entries? No Kulsum, the accounting entries is not important. But why I actually prefer the, the concept of accounting entries is because, because of two reasons. The first reason is that you are going to have control that three impacts are to be taken. Loan notes to be taken to balance sheet, 1000 to be taken to PNL, 2610 taken to PNL, and 810 to be taken to balance sheet. Now there are four impacts that should be incorporated. So that I remember these four points, I'm writing and uh, I'm writing the double entry. So I personally prefer the, the the accounting through the double entries because of two reasons. One, I have good control, and two, second reason is that um, practically when you are going to go and work, you are going to pass the double entries. Obviously, if you know the accounting but you do not know how to record the double entry, obviously you you, you will suffer. So when accounting is is through double entry why not follow the double entries so we have done adjustment number one if you have any question you people can ask i'm moving towards adjustment number two relating to non-current assets if you people have any question you can ask Tajwar is saying if the year end is 20x8 then do i need to split between current and non-current liabilities no Tajwar. in in uh, in loan notes you we never distribute between current and non-current we will be distributing between current and non-current in IFRS 16 leases. In IFRS 9, lo, uh, uh, in case of loan notes, convertible loan notes, we do not split between current and non-current liabilities. 
Now the question says that on 1st October 20x4, which was the first day of the year, Candy owned two investment properties. Candy had two investment properties. The first property had a carrying amount of 15 million. The first property was having a carrying amount of 15 million and was sold on 1st December 20x4 for 17 million dollars. We have sold the property for 17 million dollars, which means that we would have a gain of 2 million dollars. The disposal proceeds have been credited to suspense account in the trial balance above. So if I try to write my answer up till over here, I'm going to say that the correct entry should have been bank debit by 17,000. Sorry. The correct entry should be bank debit by 17,000 investment property credit by 15,000 and the gain on disposal to be recorded in PNL credit by 2000. But the question has said that what they have done, they have prepared an incorrect entry. I'm writing it over here. They have prepared the incorrect entry as bank debit and suspense account credit. So now what should be our correcting entry in this case? The amount that they would have recorded would be 17,000 again. So now what will be the correcting entry? We will be recording the correcting entry as the bank they have recorded correctly as suspense account debit. Investment property credit. And profit or loss credit. By 17,000, 15,000, and 2,000. Now let's see the amount of suspense account if it is really 17,000 or something else. Okay, yes, the amount of suspense account is 17,000. So we have actually debited the suspense account and we have closed the suspense account. So now the error that was done by the question have been corrected. The question for this is that on 31st December 20x4, the second property became owner occupied, which means that we have started to use the property now. The second property became owner occupied and so was transferred to land and building at its fair value of $6 million. So the question has prepared an entry as PP debit and investment property credit by six thousand dollars this is what we have understood from the question its remaining useful life on 31st december 20x4 was considered to be 20 years so now we need to depreciate the property over 20 years ignore any deferred tax implication on this fair value so what actually question wants us is that if i go upwards the land and building had a cost of thirty five thousand dollars out of this cost of $35,000, actually, we have the land element of 5,000. And we have a building element of remaining 30,000. So this will actually give us the total of 35,000. Now, when we are going to charge the depreciation on building, we will be charging depreciation 6,000 divided by 20. Which 6,000? The, the amount transferred from investment property to PP divided by 20 will give us the annual depreciation. But this property was being transferred on 31st December 20x4. So we are going to charge the depreciation from 20x for December. So January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. How many months? Nine months. So into nine divided by 12, the depreciation is going to be 
225 for this. Apart from this, there, there will be some depreciation uh, further on the remaining thirty thousand dollars that we will be charging separately. So let's read the question further. It says that the price of the property has increased significantly in recent years, and so the directors decided to revalue the land and building. Now the directors are revaluing the land and building. The directors accepted the report of an independent surveyor who, on first October twenty x four at the start of the year, valued the land at. Eight million dollars, and the building at thirty-nine million dollars on that date. So we actually need to revalue the property, plant, and equipment. This revaluation specifically excludes the transferred investment property described above. Just give me a minute. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay now sorry let's continue so the revaluation specifically excludes the transferred investment property that have been mentioned above the remaining life of these building at 30 at 1st october 20 x4 was 15 years so the life of the building is 15 years candy does not make an annual transfer to retail earnings to reflect the realization of the revaluation gain however revaluation will give rise to deferred tax liability as well the income tax applicable is 20 percent now one thing we have to understand which is very important that the values given in the trial balance was 35,000 five relates to the land and 30,000 relates to the building but this 30,000 actually includes the 6,000 of the property that has been transferred from investment property to PPE. This includes the uh, investment property that was transferred from prop uh, from investment property to PPE. So when we are going to revalue, when we are going to revalue, what we are going to say that the revaluation gain on land, revaluation gain on land is equals to 8,000 minus 5000 the fair value was 8000 and the carrying value was 3000 similarly the revaluation gain on building sorry So the revaluation gain on building is actually 30,000 minus 6,000 because 30,000 includes the 6,000 transferred from investment property minus the depreciation of 20,000 will give us the net book value of the building which was 4,000. So the net book value of the building was 4,000 
and the fair value of the building is <clears throat> the fair value of the building given by the question is 39 million dollars so the revaluation gain is going to be 39000 minus the net book value so this is how we are going to calculate the revaluation gain on the building which is going to be 35000 and now we need to prepare the accounting entry so for the accounting entry i'm going to say land debit building debit and land debit by three thousand dollars building debit by thirty five thousand dollars and revaluation reserve credit through oci by thirty eight thousand dollars so this is the entry we need to record we need to enter to record the revaluation gain <clears throat> okay Tajur has a question that okay this was already answered sorry so now we have done the revaluation but we need to to record the deferred tax as well now what will be the entry of deferred tax revaluation reserve debit again and deferred tax liability credit by what amount by 38,000 into the tax rate of 20% 38,000 into the tax rate of 20% so the deferred tax liability amount is going to be 7600 now we also need to charge the depreciation in the building for which the question said that the remaining life was 15 years now we have already calculated the depreciation on 6000 so is equals to 39,000 39,000 the fair value of the building at the start of the year which excludes the investment property divided by 15 years will give us the depreciation on the remaining building one building was transferred from investment property and one was held previously so our accounting entry is going to be cost of sales debit and building credit and we know that the plant will also be credited depreciated so the sum of the depreciation of building is going to be 225 plus 2600 which is going to be 28 and 25 and we know that the plant will also be depreciated so i'm writing sum of building and plant in the cost of sales now for plant the question says plant and equipment is depreciated at 12.5 percent per annum using the reducing balance method so for that we need to go back to the question the cost of the plant was 58500 minus the accumulated depreciation was 34500 into 12.5% depreciation rate so 58500 of the cost minus the accumulated depreciation into 12.5% will give us the depreciation on the plant and if you see my cost of sale has been updated because this includes now both the depreciation on the building and the plant this is how we have completed our first uh, uh, our second adjustment adjustment number 2 the question says that no depreciation has yet been charged on any non current assets for the year ended 30th September 20x5 so we have charged the depreciation now the question says that a provision of 2.4 million is required for income tax on the profit to the year 30th September 20x5 so provision of 2.4 million means current tax so I'm writing an entry as adjustment number three tax expense debit and the provision for tax credit by 2400 the question further says that the balance on current tax in the trial balance is the under over provision of tax for the previous year so the current tax given in the question relates to the under over provision so what we are going to do 
is that we are going to prepare an entry as current tax debit given in the trial balance because this had a credit balance so we are going to eliminate it by debiting it and then we are going to transfer this into the tax expense by 1100 so when we debit the current tax expense the credit balance given in the question will automatically be eliminated so i'm tracking through this that this is now not going to be taken into the balance sheet or into the income statement or anywhere else this has been transferred to the tax expense through the accounting entry now the question further says in addition to the temporary differences relating to information in two that was revaluation candy has further taxable temporary differences of 10 million dollars so the question is talking about deferred tax liability now so we had a deferred tax liability brought down and the question is informing the deferred tax liability carried down 10,000 of taxable temporary differences into 20% tax rate. So 10,000 into 20% tax rate will give us a deferred tax liability of 2000. And if I go upwards and see the brought down balance of the deferred tax liability, it was actually 1800. So this means that the deferred tax liability needs to be decreased. So my entry is going to be deferred tax liability debit by 12 uh, by 200, which is 2000 minus 1800 and tax expense credit by 200. So this is how we have completed all of the accounting entries. Now I need to incorporate these entries to calculate the retail earnings correctly. So what I'm doing is I'm stretching the question, uh, the answer sheet so that I have, I can see more area on the question paper. Okay, we have a question. Kulsum is saying, but the deferred tax is 250. Okay, I've taken an incorrect value maybe. Let me check again. Deferred tax, okay, it's two and twenty five hundred. So let me correct the value written in the accounting entry. The deferred tax brought down is basically twenty five hundred. So this means the entry should be reversed. It should be tax expense debit and deferred tax liability credit by 2500 minus 2000. Okay. <clears throat> now let's also take some further questions. Usman is saying, can you please explain that why we did not consider 7600 from revaluation? Usman, basically 7600, we have already made an accounting entry. So that accounting entry will automatically incorporate 7600. We do not need to record that again. So that is why we have not included it. Sayyid Imran Shah is saying increase in deferred tax liability or decrease in deferred tax liability. Usman, actually the brought down was 2500. The carried down we have calculated is 2000. So there is a decrease in deferred tax liability by 500 at the moment. Uh, this 500 actually uh, ignores the revaluation impact. That will be in uh, incorporated in the balance sheet directly. Okay, now what we are doing is that we are calculating the adjusted retain earnings.
Now, if we see we have credited the profit or loss in adjustment number one, so I'm writing adjustment number one and credit actually means increasing the read in earnings by 1000. Again, in adjustment number one, we have debited finance costs, which means this will decrease the profits. Debiting finance costs will increase the finance cost and will reduce the profits. So this will become negative 2610. And I'm making this as bold. The bold basically means that we have incorporated the impact of this so that we can have control that which impacts have been incorporated and which impacts have not yet been incorporated. In adjustment number two, we have credited PL. So this will be plus 2000. And I'm making this bold again. So this means that this has also been incor uh, incorporated. The revaluation and deferred tax and on revaluation will not be incorporated in the in, in the retain earnings. And then we have some depreciation of 5825 relating to same adjustment number two. And further, if we go down downwards, we have credited tax expense of 1100 minus we have debited 2400 and minus we have debited 500 so to incorporate tax we need to have a net impact of negative 1800 i'm showing you the working again that there were three impacts we have debited tax expense 2400 increased by 2400 decreased by 1100 increased by 500 so there is a net increase of 1800 so the net increase basically uh, will reduce the profits so that is why the net total is becomes a negative 1800 so that is all if i calculate the sum equals to sum of all these values this will give me the adjusted retail earnings of 8265. So this is how we have completed our requirement number one. That was to prepare a schedule of adjustments required to the retail earnings of candy as a result of the information in note one, two, three above. So if you people have any question up to now, you can ask. Now we will be moving towards the second requirement statement of financial position. As at 30th September 20x5. Yes, so Mama, this is how you have to solve the question in the exam too. That is why I have solved this in the real exam environment so that you people can be aware of what what information should be given, how it, uh, it should be given, how you're going to show the workings, everything. Yes, Kulsum, you can have the uh, abbreviations too, but there is no use for that. We have already done the work in the adjustments. The question will not give any additional marks for the abbreviation. That for example, if you write over here, reversing the issue cost expensed out. If you write, if you want to write this information, you can write, but there are no additional marks for this. So you can simply refer to adjustment number one that we have adjusted this. So these are the increased decrease that will that will give us the total of the adjusted retail earnings. Now we are going to prepare a balance sheet. For balance sheet, I need to go, go back towards the question. Now I'm going to write the non-current assets heading. 
in non current assets we have property plant and equipment we have investment property that's it any other non uh, uh, any other non current asset we have no then we have current assets and then we have total assets on the credit side we have equity in which we have equity shares we have revaluation reserve that we have created we have retained earnings and then we will be having some non current liabilities in non current liabilities we have sorry in non current liabilities we have loan notes and we have deferred tax liability then we have some current liabilities now this is basically the format and at the end we have total equity and liabilities that should match with, match with the total assets now if i see the property plant equipment the value of property plant equipment in the question was 35000 minus 20000 35000 minus 20000 which is actually 15000 so i have incorporated this i have incorporated this apart from this we had some plant as well so plus 58500 minus 34500 although we have made some adjustments in these values through the double entries but first we are going to write the values given in the question and then we will be actually changing them through the accounting double entries the investment property given to us was 20000 so we have written this the current assets given to us was 68 700 we have written this all these values have been incorporated the equity shares given to us was 20000 there was no revaluation reserve given to us the retained earnings given to us was 15500 this value and then we have some proceeds of loan notes which was given to us as 30000 this value now all these have been incorporated then deferred tax liability given to us was 20 500 the current liability is given to us was 43 400 and the interest paid of 1800 we have actually incorporated in one of our accounting entries let me show you where in the interest cost of bank credit we have already incorporated this this 1800 so now the first step is basically to incorporate the values from the trial balance into the balance sheet that we are preparing asad khan is saying where we can have all the schedule of for f7 which you have opened in powerpoint asad i will share the powerpoint slide with you in fact i will try to create the whatsapp group um, just in uh, today's session so that you people can join immediately any further information required can be discussed over there okay now if we see that now we have made some double entries starting from the loan notes we have debited the loan notes and we have credited the loan notes by 1810 so if i go towards the loan notes the amount of loan notes was 
I'm writing equals to plus 810 minus minus what 1000 so the loan notes is now 29810 which we had also calculated in the amortization table we can also use the value directly from over here 29810 but a better method is to use the accounting double entry so that you you, you can manage control that we have incorporated this loan notes we have incorporated this loan notes now we have to incorporate the investment property minus 15,000 so let's move on to the investment property right equals to so that the calculator basically starts and then minus 15,000 so the investment property is basically 5,000 and then we have to debit the land by 5,000 so plus the 3,000 land debit plus 35,000 building debit minus 2825 for the depreciation of building and minus 3000 for the depreciation of plant so we have incorporated these two values we have incorporated these two values and that's it we have we had already incorporated the cost of sales We had already incorporated the cost of sales over here 5825 so now the next area let's incorporate the revaluation reserve so the revaluation reserve is equals to 38,000 minus 70 600 relating to the deferred tax these are incorporated now let's incorporate the deferred tax liability of 7600 for this we need to Move towards the non current liabilities and let's write down equals to over here so equals to 2500 plus 7600 this have been incorporated now tax expense 2400 incorporated in the retail earnings adjustments and the current tax provision for tax should be added in the current liabilities by 2400 this has been incorporated tax expense was already incorporated and the tax expense was again incorporated now we have to add the deferred tax liability by 500 so deferred tax liability i'm going to add by 500 now i have actually added all of the adjustments now let's calculate the sum of all these values which is 134110 and let's calculate the sum on the debit hand side the sum of all these values will be 144875 so let's see okay the retain earnings we have not yet updated the retain earnings after adjustment was eight two six five so now the total is actually one four four eight seven five minus one two six eight seven five which is eighteen thousand so is there any value of eighteen thousand that we have missed let's see any value in the trial balance no any value in the adjustments
Arshian is asking that double entries is compulsory to show to the examiner. No, Arshian, it is not necessary. We are doing this just to have our own control. <clears throat> Kulsum is saying that investment property should be eliminated. Mm hmm. Let's see where have we done the mistake? We have taken the retain earnings. Let's check equity. Okay, here is the mistake. Actually, the equity shares was in the question, it was 20,000. This was 20,000 and we have written 2,000. Here's the difference of 18,000. So if I make it 20, our final accounts question is actually balanced. So if you are following the rule of double entry, so it is not possible that your balance sheet should be out other than any typing error or, or other than any calculation error. So this was the first question. If you people have any question in this, you can ask. We have only 30 minutes right now and we have a complete question to go. Any question you people can ask? <clears throat> okay, now let's move on to the next question. By the name of Moby. Anisha is asking that can I get the recordings? Yes, Anisha, you can leave for work and you will get the recordings up, uh, uploaded by the management. Kulsu be saying that, but when we have sold the first investment property and then why the heading is still there? Kulsu, because we may be having multiple properties. We have sold one and we have transferred one into the property plant equipment, but maybe there may be some third investment property. That is why. Uh, it is being shown uh, in the balance sheet. Rishal is saying that I'm facing some internet failure issue. Can you please show me the presentation of the last question? Okay, Rishal, basically, let me show you. This was the last question that we have just solved. And one more thing that we have good in this Go CB Global is that we have an export option. If I click on the export button, it will actually open a new window and will download the answer into an Excel file. And then you can actually use that Excel file as well. So I will be making the WhatsApp group or I think I should be making the WhatsApp group. Let me create the group right now and then I'm going to share the, the details. So if you see the Excel file has now been downloaded. If I open the Excel file. Now you can see the entire answer has now been downloaded on onto the Excel file. The income statement you are going to find all of the linkages linkages that we have created. So this is the Excel file. You can find all of the linkages that we have created over here. All of the values you can find linked 
so what I will do is actually I will share the Excel file on the WhatsApp group so that you people can actually directly use the Excel file even if the students have not been attending the session live they can have the WhatsApp um, uh, they can still join the WhatsApp group later and can ask for the files over there yes I will be sharing the saved Excel file so that everyone can be can benefit from this Usman is saying that this time this take more time in CB than on paper yes Usman basically in CBs um, because we are not used to of working on the Excel that is why it comparatively takes more time but if but if you do this frequently uh, if you are solving every question on the Excel in that case um, you will comparatively take less time so the WhatsApp group is now creating and I will share you the, the path Imran is asking to share my number Imran my number is plus nine two double three four three seven three nine six nine seven plus nine two double three four three seven three nine six nine seven so you people can share this number uh, save this number Okay. <clears throat> yes, Usman, the questions will now be made according to the CB's requirements. Okay, I'm sharing the group link. You people can join this. HTTPS. chat dot whatsapp dot com slash seven i n one capital j capital m small a capital o small q small u capital x capital e small v small y four capital j small o capital m capital u capital q b u so this is the link I'm sending you to you people on the chat box. If you people have any problem joining the group, you can simply drop me an SMS on WhatsApp and I will send you the link directly. <clears throat> okay, so now we are done with the first question. Let's move on to the next. I'm closing the window I want to leave and I want to start the new question now this is by the name of Moby Okay, so the question has loaded now the requirement says prepare a statement of profit or loss another comprehensive income for Mobi for the year ended 30th September 20x3 prepare a statement of cash flow sorry prepare a statement of financial position for Mobi as at 30th September 20x13 and in, in the note question says that a statement of change in equities and notes of the financial statements are not required and the following marks allocations provided as guidance for this question now this is a bit old question that is why it, it, it is of 25 marks down now the new questions will be of 20 marks so again what we are going to do one two three four five six after six columns we are making a column small and we are going to write double entries over here are the double entries useful to you people 
or you have or, or you people are finding it difficult because it actually makes this the control over the answer strong and the accounting is all double entries so if you are saving yourself from the entries you can never be a good accountant okay wilson is saying that yes double entries is good and arshian is saying that it is difficult <laughs> Usman is saying that it's useful to control and pass adjustments. Yes, useful. Okay, that's good. So it is not necessary to prepare the entries. If you people are finding it difficult, you can leave it. But actually, my way of teaching is through double entries so that more people can get a good control. The balance sheet remains balanced and practically you can have some good value in the market. Okay, now let's start the question. The question says that the following notes are relevant. The balance on the construction contract is made up of the following items. Cost incurred to date is $14 million. Value of contract build, which means work certified is $10 million. So we have incurred a cost of 14 and we have built the, the, the customer of $10 million. So if I go in the trial balance and if I see there's there's a construction contract note number one of four thousand dollars. So this means that we have incurred a cost of 14 and we have received the cash from the customer of four uh, of 10. The net balance is four, which is shown in the, in the trial balance. Now the question says that the contract commenced on 1st October 2012, which was the start of the year and is for a fixed price of 25 million dollars so the revenue is 25 million dollars the cost to complete the contract at 30th september 20x 13 is estimated at 6 million dollars so we have incurred 14 million and further cost we are going to incur is 6 million so the total cost is expected is 20 million mobis policies to accrue profits on construction contract based on the stage of completion given by work certified as a percentage of the contract price so what we are going to do this is a question relating to ifrs 15. usman is saying we can do working on extra paper by hand right yes usman you can do it but for example if you have done some working which was half correct and half incorrect if you're doing a working which is half correct and half incorrect but you have written it on the paper the examiner will give you zero because your answer is incorrect and he does not know what error have you done but if you are showing the working on the spreadsheet question uh, uh, on the spreadsheet of the answer uh, the examiner will, will give you the marks up to where you have done correct and from where we from where you have done the error only those marks will be deducted so it is always better to perform the all of the workings on the spreadsheet do not write anything on the uh, paper apart from what you feel good okay so you people can simply drop me an sms if you if, if you if, if you're finding it difficult to join the group i've just created it you can send me drop me a message on my contact number i will add you to the group directly okay now what we are going to do is actually in IFRS 15 construction contract we need to calculate the revenue we need to calculate the cost and we need to calculate the profit and apart from this we need to calculate the percentage of completion so the percentage of completion should be work agreed which is 10,000 divided by the contract price of 20 5200 which means that the that the project has been 40 percent done or you can even use this percentage to cal to convert the value into the percentage so the 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 work done is actually work agreed of 10,000 divided by contract price of 25,000 which makes the work 40 percent done so the revenue is going to be 25,000 into 40% the cost will be negative 
which is 14,000 plus 6,000. We have incurred 14. We will incur further 6. So total cost is 20,000 into 40% should be the cost. And the profit should actually be the total of $2,000. So this is how we actually calculate the profit on the construction contract under IFRS 15. So now what entry are we going to make? We are going to record the entry as bank debit and revenue credit by the amount of $10,000. This is the amount of revenue and according to the question we have already received $10 million. So that is why I have used bank. If the amount would have been receivable we would have treated this as receivable. Now secondly, the cost of sales was by the amount of 8,000 and the cost incurred to date is of 14,000. So this means that the difference of this amount should be a balance treated as due from customer the amount the difference we treat as a due from customer in the current assets so this is how we prepare the double entries in case of IFRS 15 construction contracts Yes, Toeb, we actually we are we are actually short of time. That is why we have moved on to the next question. But you can try this at home and you can discuss on the WhatsApp group if you have any problem. So we have made an entry as cost of sales debit by eight thousand dollars and the cost to date of four thousand dollars with six thousand dollars being treated as the due from customer. We have calculated this as a balancing figure. Now in adjustment number two, the question says that Mobi decided to revalue its land and building for the first time on 1st October 2012. We have decided to revalue the asset at the start of the year. A qualified value determined the relevant values, the, the, the relevant revalued amount to be 16 million for land and 38.4 million for the building. So let's check the value of the land and building in the trial balance. The land was 12 and the building was 48. And apart from this, the building would have been depreciated as well by $10,000. So if I write the net book value of the land, it is going to be 12,000. The net book value of the building is going to be 48,000 minus 10,000. And the fair value given by the question is 16,000 for the land we have to check the zeros properly because in the last question our balance sheet got out because of the zero Elvin, can you drop me an SMS personally? If you drop me an SMS personally, I will add you directly. Okay, so the fair value of the building given is 38,400. So if I write the accounting entry, I'm going to say land debit. And building debit. Land is going to be debited, uh, going to be debited by sixteen thousand minus twelve thousand, and if I copy this and paste this underneath, you're going to see that it will apply the formula automatically onto the building. And I'm going to credit the revaluation reserve through OCI. By the total.
And then the question further says that the building remaining life at the date of revaluation was 16 years. So I'm going to charge the depreciation of the building into cost of sales. And I know that the plant will also be depreciated. So the value of the building was 38,400 divided by its life of 16 years. So the total depreciation in the building is 2400 and I'm writing the sum so that whenever I charge the depreciation on plant, my cost of sale will automatically be updated. Uh, it is not necessary because all working that we are doing are already in triple zeros. Okay, now we have used the depreciation of 16 years. The question further says that this revelation has not been reflected in the trial balance figures above. So we have already reflected. Mobi does not make a transfer of the revaluation reserve to retain earning in respect of the realization. That's good enough. Deferred tax applicable is. 25% so what we are going to do we will be debiting the revaluation reserve and we will be crediting the deferred tax liability by what amount 4400 into 25% so this is how we have charged the revaluation of the asset now the question further says that the lease plant was acquired on 1st October 2011 which means two years back from the year in under a five-year finance lease now the finance lease is known as lease which has an implicit rate of 10 percent per annum the lease rentals implicit rate is 10 percent the lease rentals are 9.2 million per annum payable on 30th September each year. So now the question is talking about lease. So for lease, what do we do is actually we prepare a table. The table as date. Interest. rentals repayment and carried down so the asset was taken on lease on 1st October 2011 let's see the value of the asset given in the question the lease plant at initial carrying amount was 35,000 so the asset was initially taken on lease for 35,000 now the lease rentals are being paid at each year end by 9.2 million. So the first rentals would have been paid on 30th September 2012, which was the last year. And the interest would have been 10 percent with the rentals being 9200 and out of 9200 3500 is the interest. So the repayment would become uh, uh, so the carried down would become 29,300 this value should be there in the trial balance and if you see this is there 29,300 so we are going on the right track these are the values that the question has already incorporated and already accounted for now we need the accounting of 30th September 2013 so if what we do is simply copy this and paste this it will automatically calculate the values for the current year Okay, so 30th September 2013 and then we are going to also calculate one more year 30th September 2014 copy and paste. So all values we have got now. So the question has done the work over till over here. The finance cost relevant for us in the current year is going to be 29 
3.30. The amount paid during the race 9.200. The repayment, uh, uh, the, the current liability is going to be 6.897 and the non-current liability is going to be 16133. So what we can do is we can prepare a single entry covering all values being finance cost debit. Lease liability, which was recorded by the question. We are actually debiting that so that that gets eliminated. And instead, we are going to record our own lease liability as current and non current. And we have paid some rent rentals during the year from the bank. So my entry is going to be finance cost debit by 2930. Opening liability given by the question was 29300. We are debiting it, eliminating it. The current liability for us is 6897. The non current liability for us is 16133. And the rentals that we have paid is 9200. So this is how we can. Uh, apply the entire accounting of the lease for a uh, win in one double entry. You do not need to make multiple entries. There's a question that why I have calculated till 30th September two, 2014. The reason is that my finance cost is 2930. The rentals that I've paid is 9200 and now my liability is 23060. Now my liability is 2360 out of which 6897 will be paid during the next year. So this should be current liability and remaining should be the non current liability. So that is why we need to calculate for one more year. So now we have done the adjustment of lease as well. Then the question says that own plant and equipment is depreciated at 12.5 percent per annum using the reducing balance. So we had already left some space for the. Depreciation. Okay, so we have done the adjustment relating to lease and we have a uh, you you people are requested to provide the feedback. So I'm stopping for two minutes so that you people can provide the feedback of the session about today's session. So that we can even improve further. So you people can quickly provide the feedback so that we can continue with the question.
Okay, thank you, Gulsoom. Thank you, Zahid. Thank you, Sahar. I said you can drop me an SMS personally. I will add you. Okay, now let's uh, so let's continue. Thank you so much. So the depreciation for plant is going to be on reducing balance basis. So we are charging 65, 700 minus 17,700 of the accumulated depreciation into the depreciation rate. For that, we need to go back downwards. It was 12.5%. So into 12.5% will give us the depreciation of the plant. And if you see, this will automatically be added to the cost of sales. And apart from this, we also have the leased asset. So I'm adding 35,000 of the leased asset carrying amount divided by five years because the lease was five years. So now the total depreciation for the plant for both the owned and the leased is 13,000. And if you see the cost of sales is now again updated. So we have charged the depreciation of 12.5%. We only have seven minutes left. And we need to go through three different adjustments. So adjustment number three, the question says that on 1st October 2012, which is the start of the year, Mobi received a renewal quote of 400,000 from the company's property insurer. The directors were surprised at how much it had increased and believed it would be less expensive for the company to self insure, which means that the company can be at the risk on its own. Accordingly, they charged 400 to administrative expenses and credited the same amount to the insurance provision. So although they have not insured themselves from the insurance company, but still they have recorded insurance premium. So is it correct or not? It's not correct when you are when you are not insuring what for what are you recording the provision? So what we will be doing, we will be debiting the provision back provision for insurance and we will be crediting the administrative expenses by what amount 400 now the question further says that during the year the company incurred 250000 of expense relating to previously insured property damaged which it has debited to the provision the company has incurred cost of 250 which they have debited in the provision and credited the bank is this the correct entry obviously not the correct entry was administrative expenses debit and the bank credit because the cost that we have incurred based on the self insurance is our expense so the entry should have been 250 administrative expenses debit bank credit. So now what correcting entry should we be recording? Because the question has recorded an incorrect entry. So should we should be debiting the administrative expenses by 250 and we will be crediting the uh, provision which the question is already debited. So your entries administrative expenses debit and provision for insurance credit for adjustment number three. Okay, sir, you have written a very good long message <laughs> for the feedback. And thank you everyone else too. Toyo, Blevender, Edaya, Zahid. Okay. So now adjustment number four. In adjustment four, the question says that, the, that a provision for income tax for the year ended 30th September 2013 of 3.4 million is required. So we need to record a provision of 3.4. So the entry is going to be adjustment number four. 
tax expense debit and provision for tax credit by 3400 the balance on current tax represents the under over provision of the tax liability for the previous year so we should eliminate that let's see the value the current tax is credit 1050 so what we are going to do is we will be eliminating this by debiting the current tax and we will be crediting the amount of tax expense by 1050 now we need to record the deferred tax impact for which the question says that at 30th september 2013 the tax base of mobi's net assets was 24 million less than their tax uh, carrying amount so we need to calculate the deferred tax liability for this we need deferred tax liability brought down we need deferred tax liability carried down and the question says that there is a 24000 difference into 25% tax rate will give us the deferred tax liability and this does not include the effect of revaluation because we have already included the impact of revaluation so let's check the deferred tax liability brought down which is given as 8000 in the question so the liability needs to be reduced so we will be debiting the deferred tax liability account and we will be crediting the tax expense by what amount 8000 minus 6000 so this is the entry and the last entry the question says if admin can give us just two more minutes i would request the admin to give just two more minutes so that we can just complete the entries then then uh, the students will be able to complete the question at their home the 40 million loan note was issued at par on 1st october 2012 it was issued at par which means that the brought down balance in the table is going to be the par value of 40000 in year 1 the finance cost or the interest expense will be on the effective rate the interest paid will be on the coupon rate and we will have amortization and then the carried down so the question says that no interest will be paid on the loan so the interest paid is zero however it will be redeemed on 30th september 2015 for this amount which gives the effective finance rate of 10% so the interest expense is going to be 10% and the interest paid is zero so the entire amount is going to be amortization and the carried down is going to be 40000 plus 4000 so your entry is going to be adjustment number 5 finance cost debit and the loan notes credit by what amount by the amount of 4000 So this is how we have completed all of the accounting entries and the times also up. So you have to solve the remaining question on your own at your home. What I can do for you is that I can complete the question on my own after uh, the session and I will show you, uh, I, uh, I will share the complete excel file on the WhatsApp group. So you people can join the WhatsApp group. I've shared the link. You can text me personally if if in case that you want uh, uh, if in case you are unable to join the group. Thank you everyone thank you for the session and take care i hope the session was useful to all of you looking forward to meet you tomorrow take care and allah hafiz